Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are very glad that you came here to our panel. Uh, and uh, you know, our topic is uh, in this afternoon access to arts and museums. Uh, all of us sitting here are deeply involved in this uh, uh, topic, and I first would like to present myself. My name is Rotrad Kral. I'm art historian. I'm working at the Museum of Fine Arts in Vienna, here in Vienna, Kunsthistorisches Museum. Uh, since 2010, I am responsible for barrier-free art education programs for children, young people, and also adults. I started with programs for visually and blind, as visually impaired and blind uh, people, and um, uh, then uh, since uh, 2016, we also offer programs for people with uh, dementia, art education for people with dementia, with great success. And uh, yeah, uh, since one year, I or since uh, 2017, I'm also dealing with the problem art education for hearing impaired people. Uh, I would like to introduce you uh, Lara Schweller. Uh, she's sitting next uh, to the desk. Uh, Lara Schweller comes from New York, from the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, she is uh, the coordinator for community and access programs at the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, yeah, the idea and the aim of this museum is making exceptional art programming and open the museum to all visitors. When you have once time to have a look to the homepage, you will see a really wonderful offer for all different groups and beautiful films where you can also see and enjoy uh, the atmosphere which is created by these guided tours and by these uh, programs. And uh, what is also very, very interesting and, and helpful for other colleagues, you find also lots of uh, tips, love, lots of ideas what you uh, can do, how you can work. Yeah, uh, Lara works on accessibility across the museum, collaborating with staff to ensure building and exhibition accessibility, as well as staff training. Lara uh, focuses uh, on the museum's award-winning education program for individuals uh, with a range of disabilities. Lara also serves as the co-chair of the Museum Access Consortium, an association that works to strengthen the best practices for access and inclusion throughout New York. And uh, Lara holds a PhD from the University of California, Irvine, and a BA from Harvard University. Please, Lara, start your presentation. Thank you, Rotrat, for that introduction. And hello, everyone. I'm honored to be here among colleagues to talk about museums and accessibility. So at MoMA, uh, we believe in making the museum accessible to people with disabilities through a multi-aspect approach. Um, we align our practices with a philosophy for accessible education. We train staff in disability equality awareness. And we have a cross-museum task force uh, that focuses on creating accessibility ambassadors within each department so that they become responsible for accessibility in their respective field. Our first director, Alfred H. Barr, wrote that MoMA should be a place for people to enjoy, understand, and use the art of our time. A place for people to find meaning and pleasure through engagement with art. And here in this image, we have a visitor with a disability. It's a young girl with her mother uh, in the galleries. People with disabilities are part of our public, but they're often excluded from opportunities for meaningful conversations about art and culture. At MoMA, uh, we're very lucky to work with approximately 10,000 visitors with disabilities each year through our access programs finding ways to empower people to discover art through new experiences. And example, an example of this um, is in this image. It is a, a woman on a touch tour at the museum touching a sculpture in our garden and hopefully discussing sculpture as well. 
Visitors with disabilities are also empowered to create. Here we have a young boy with a developmental disability making art with his father in our Creatability program. And through our exhibition program, people with disabilities are, we hope, inspired to share and connect. Uh, in this image, we have a young boy with autism who is speaking about his artwork that's on display in our Creatability exhibition. And we believe that museums should be places that offer people, all people, opportunities to develop their voices and their agencies as part of a cultural community. It's not just about education programs, it's the entire visitor journey from entering the lobby to seeing the artwork to leaving. Um, this image shows visitors with dementia attending one of our programs. They're entering the museum and being greeted at the lobby desk. And we train staff by sharing best practices and inspiring empathy. That is our goal. We want to work towards shifting attitudes towards people with disabilities. And we do this through ongoing training. We do what's called train the trainer. Uh, through our accessibility task force, we've identified uh, ambassadors for accessibility. In this image, we have our senior exhibition designer who is on a tour uh, with an expert uh, from the field of disability law, and she's learning about uh, protruding objects for people who are blind or low vision, so that as an exhibition designer, she can then take that knowledge and think creatively with her team about how to design accessible exhibitions and public spaces within the museum. And we prioritize training um, primarily because what we've learned over time is that it has the greatest impact in how people are welcomed into the museum. The human element is very important, and so as we continue to train staff to be welcoming, we've seen greater impact and greater shift in the opportunities that people with disabilities have within our museum, not only in education programs, but in visiting the museum in a variety of ways. We're currently working towards creating more open source uh, staff training resources. One example is our Meet Me website, which is available in a variety of languages to assist cultural institutions in beginning their own programs for people with dementia and Alzheimer's disease and their care partners. MoMA is part of local, international, and national uh, networks of cultural institutions, and we believe in sharing and exchanging resources. Uh, and we're hoping that we can just continue to work with museums and develop training together to create more opportunities for people with disabilities across all museums. And for us, uh, this, this quote comes from an aunt of one of our Creatability participants. She says uh, about the participant who is an adult with autism, you have given her a spark and a joy and have also helped her define herself as an artist, which is what she now tells people she is. And for me especially, this gets back to the heart of what we do, which is giving people with dis uh, disabilities opportunities to come together, to learn, to create, to discover, to connect, and to share in new ways. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Lara. Uh, I think uh, we just continue with our presentations and at the end we have the time to discussion. Well, uh, to my left hand side is uh, Leila Agic. She comes from uh, Zenica city in uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. That's the, I think, uh, fourth greatest city in Bosnia Herzegovina, north of Sarajevo. I hope I'm correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> Uh, she uh, graduated uh, uh, in psychology in 2004 at the University of Sarajevo and uh, since then she has been employed at Senica City Museum uh, as museum educator. Uh, perhaps we can also uh, just sum up a little bit the characteristics of your museum afterwards. Of course. Um, yeah, um, she has finished also certification exam for tourist guide in Ministry of Environment and Tourism 
of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina that's in my opinion most important when you have to do with people who are interested in fine art to bring them into uh, our museum. I have also both degrees, I'm art historian. <laughs> Uh, and uh, since uh, 2005, uh, she, uh, she was also working two major uh, EU-funded projects. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, Leila designed and implemented a lot of creative and educational workshops for children, accompanying publications, tactile uh, replicas for permanent exhibition, and so on. Please, Leila, it's your partner. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to... Uh to thank you all for being here. Um, my name is, as you heard, Leila, and I'm representing actually uh, six countries. It's Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, Greece, uh, former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia, and Serbia, and nine people, which are the Balkan Museum Network Access Group. So um, I have a lot of to represent. Um, we are a peer learning group, as I said, consisted of uh, nine people. Uh, we are trying to develop accessibility and inclusion in our own museums where, where we come from. And uh, we are working on developing accessibility future in our museums uh, and uh, working with the uh, uh, two professional uh, disability trainers, coach from uh, United Kingdom, Michelle Taylor and Diana Walters, on the three year uh, pro long project that we are actually going to training. Um, what, are, what are we? Uh, hmm? Hmm? So, it is hard to enjoy the museums and experience of museum in Balkan area. A lot of our museums are actually in a physical sense, they are not accessible because they are put in an old building and all those buildings are actually monuments. So when we pass through this physical uh, accessibility and we must be really creative in that sense because uh, we cannot do much on the protected monument, so we are using car lifts, so we are using different kind of um, level near slopes to, to, ha uh, to have a physical access. Then we, are, uh, we have to deal with a uh, uh, most important part of uh, accessibility, and that's stigma. Uh, because in a Balkan area, a lot of uh, people with disabilities are a lot of stigmatized, and uh, it's really important that first touch with the culture and co getting to the museum that you are greeted with a smile, at least. So there is a lot of cheap solutions that we can do uh, and in our museums, uh, starting with a pen and the paper, if you don't have a different kind of approach and a technical support, for example, with to, to talk with uh, deaf or a hard hearing pe people, you can use just plain paper and pen. So, uh, here in this picture, you're actually seeing um, us, uh, my museum, performing a workshop with uh, children from uh, school, primary school for uh, rehabilitation and uh, schooling for uh, disabled children, and they are with a different kind of disabilities. So we used um, sport gym, so everyone could access it and everyone could be able to uh, enjoy the things. We are making replica of a uh, silver coin, medieval silver coin of uh, King uh, Stepan from 15th century. So they are making it in clay and painted it. Um, uh, our uh, our uh, goal is to uh, take uh, changes from uh, inner, our, from our personal level, and we are taking those changes to the, our institutional level. We are uh, actually teaching ourselves, but we are also teaching our colleagues working within the museum. 
a lot of thing, uh, a lot of problem comes actually from not knowing what to do, not dealing with the people with disabilities on everyday basis. I'm personally, I'm coming from the small museum. It's a general type of museum. We have a four different collections and uh, f permanent exhibitions. And the other problem in museum also is uh, that everything is stored in showcases and uh, covered with a glass. So there is just a few things to be touched, to be felt, or to by other senses than seeing. So. Um, as I said, with a lot of creativity, we are using our smartphones to make uh, audio guides, to have them in the museum. We are also making uh, tactile replicas uh, where applicable, and uh, uh, text in Braille, description in Braille. So that's the way we are doing some accessibility issues in museums. Um, since 2050, we have done 11 small projects in uh, 10 museums across the Balkans. Uh, as I mentioned just a minute ago, those uh, projects are concerning this uh, lift car or physical uh, uh, accessibility issues in museums, but also those, uh, uh, those uh, accessibility features that we are doing are dealing with uh, this, how to make a good workshop that will suit everyone, um, how to make a good tactile replicas, and in uh, which material, and. Uh, we, we, we were do, uh, doing that with uh, artists, but also with 3D printing technologies and 3D scanning uh, of exhibits. Uh, and that's actually one of the latest projects that were done in my museum with the Faculty uh, of Mechanical Engineering, local Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. Sometimes it's not important how Resource, how many or not to have resources. It is important to be creative and to have a will. So you can use uh, altruistic approaches in the other, uh, other people to help you deal with it. And we are using a student of mechanical engineering. So it's a learning process for them and a learning process for us also. And uh, the main thing that we uh, did is to reduce the in isolation of uh, uh, the disabled people in our communities. Um, for us, it is really important that we have in museum something to give. It's not about would disabled person come to museum. Maybe she, she or he will decide that museum is not important to visit, but at least we are doing things to improve it and to have for, for everyone the same uh, 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 enjoyment in uh, art and uh, culture. As you can see on this picture, it's uh, from uh, Teshan, it's also a museum, a small museum from Bosnia and Herzegovina. They are uh, making uh, a traditional a pottery, making is traditional craft in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and they are doing that uh, with a professional clay artist uh, and with the also blind children and the uh, different kind disab of disability, disabled children too. And th this is also one um, uh, useful craft. So if you know how to make a pot, you can probably be self-sustainable because they taught women also to do that and uh, raise their uh, m money in their uh, families. This is from uh, Albania. It's also uh, from the one project. It's a museum in a suitcase. So when uh, visitors are not able to come to museum, then museum is able to come to visitors and to go to schools and uh, present some of the tactile uh, images, uh, replicas, and uh, text in Braille. Uh, we are founded by Stavros Niarkos Foundation, and that's G Greek Philanthropic uh, Foundation, and it's a three-year project. It's a much bigger project. It's crafting art called uh, and um, sustainable. Okay. 
And sustainability is actually ensured in our own museum because we are uh, taught a lot and we are uh, doing education to our other colleagues. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Leila. And now, um, right hand side is uh, sitting Nadia Almazri Guternik from Salzburg Museum. Uh, she studied art history and education with a special emphasis on inclusive art and cultural uh, mediation. Uh, she is active uh, now in this field in the Salzburg Museum and has also published a book on barrier free communication. Uh, in this field, and uh, yeah, uh, she is uh, also a teacher in a special school for young people with uh, behavioral uh, problems. And what is very, very helpful for her profession, she is also a goldsmith, because this practical access, I think, this access to a practic, uh, te special technique is very helpful to uh, develop programs. And uh, in uh, the year 216, the Salzburg Museum, uh, won the uh, award of the Lebenshilfe Österreich uh, for her programs in easy read uh, language. And please, Nadia, tell us a little bit more about your programs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here today and speak about our project. Um, our project called Easy Language, the Key to the Museum. Um, the goal for any barrier-free project is to include everyone. Um, when building a ramp, one does not discuss the stairs. In our project, having both texts next to each other um, allows for enjoy it allows an enjoyable, inclusive experience for every man and woman. Yes. The Salzburg Museum is a museum for art and culture history. Their task is to preserve, explore, and convoy the cultural and historical heritage of Salzburg. The museum develops concepts and programs that connect historical roots with the today issue and developments, offering the opportunity and the place to discuss them. The museum... Uh, the museum is constantly working in, to ensure maximum, maximum accessibility we want to offer, physical accessibility and information that is barrier-free. At, uh, at the exhibition Bischof Employer Everyone in 2060, the Salzburg Museum was the first museum in Austria to offer exhibition text in easy language eliminating language and intellectual barriers. The special feature of our project was that, that, was that the text was not an optional offer. They were integrated into the exhibition and, and put equally with the other available text on the walls. The text allow people to independently tap into the contact and participate the cultural life of the museum. The texts were checked by people with disabilities. The texts um, put equally in the exhibition to set a clear signal of being an inclusive museum. This should be a statement. In addition to the text on the wall, the museum published a handbook about easy language. This, ben, this can be used and assistance for other cultural institutions interested in creating barrier-free content. After the introduction of easy language, it was important for the Salzburg Museum to examine the, the effect of these texts. How informative are the texts really? Who needs them? Who reads them? What do people think about this text? What does it do? How can you use them? Various scientific methods were used to check this. The Salzburg Museum received support from export for this project, 
So the PH Salzburg and Capito helped by creating the texts. The Salzburg University um, helped with scientific investigation. The Language Center of the University of Salzburg developed a language course in the museum of linguistic text from the museum. Barrier-free access creates a meaningful and most importantly self-determined visit for many people. The resulting conversation, discu controversial discussion about easy language um, created much awareness to the subject and this would be very important. The museum was um, awarded um, the 2016 Inclusive Award for the pioneering work in providing accessible information, enjoying other culture institutions to follow. Since the intro, introduction in easy language, the text, um, easy language texts are now standard in all exhibitions of the Salzburg Museum. The museum is steadily expanding its barrier-free offer. In 2017, it launched its barrier-free homepage. And so the, the project accessibility is now an ongoing process and we hope it will not end. Um, Johannes Holweger is not seen on the picture now, um, is a regular visitor of the museum, interested in city history and in culture. He says that, the, in, the, he says that in, in the past he did not understand the text. Constantly, every time he needs some help from other people. Um, when texts are in easy language, he can independently use the museum. And that makes him proud and that makes us proud. Thank you very much for your you. attention. Now we come to our fourth speaker. It's uh, Sonia Garcia Freile. Uh, Sonia works at the Department of Culture and Leisure within the uh, Universal Accessibility and Innovation Directorate of Fundación ONCE. Uh, perhaps uh, you can give us a short explication what the Fundación is doing. She has a degree in economics from Carlos III, University of Madrid, and completed a postgraduate uh, course in universal accessibility and design for all at La Salle University. Uh, Sonia has developed most of her professional career in Fundación ONCE, and her current Responsibilities include development and execution of different projects in areas such as accessible tourism, accessible leisure activities and culture, design for all, education and specific awareness raising activities. Please, Sonia. Hello, good afternoon, guten Tag, buenas tardes. Uh, thank you so much for giving us the, the um, the opportunity to share this, this marvelous project here in Zero Project Conference. Thank you so much also for the introduction. As she says, I work in Fundación ONCE. Fundación ONCE is a non-profit organization who, which works towards the inclusion of people with disabilities in all scope of life. We are in our 30th anniversary just now. Um, we, we work for uh, the inclusion in all, of, in all the scopes of, of lives. This is, includes culture, uh, the, which is why in 2006 we decided to develop um, a new project, the Biennial of Contemporary Art. Um, uh, Fundación ONCE also has many programs in, in work and, and inclusion programs, but I'm, I'm going to talk about you this one. Uh, sorry, I forgot to. <laughs> I'm going to talk about four topics of the Biennial Contemporary Art. First of all, what is it? Who is the target audience? How is it carried out? And the future. Uh, Fundación Once Contemporary Art Biennial is a cultural project that 
it's organized every two years and it lasts four months. The, the main activity is a, a, group, a, a group exhibition where more than half of the artist feature has a disability. Our aim is that all the disabilities were represented, sensory, physically, mental illness, and also intellectual disability. Oh, sorry. Parallel, sorry. Parallel activities are also organized, yes, uh, as guided tours to the exhibitions, dance shows, music, theater, and cinema series, and also art workshops for all people. Um, most, most of the artists are professionals, um, and who they aren't, they have a high artistic uh, professional level. I, I, sorry, I have problems with the. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, our, our objectives are awareness and accessibility. Awareness to show soci society the quality of the work of artists with disabilities. For example, during the inauguration of the sixth edition of the biennial, we hired a, a DJ without no arms and he mixed music with, with his feet and, and we enjoy the, the party and dance um, and anybody cares if he, he play, he mixed music with the, his, feet, his feet or his arms. And also accessibility, to bring to culture world to people with disabilities by having accessible cultural activities to allow them to enjoy them as, as my colleague said. An example of this was the, in the, during the fourth edition of the biennial inauguration, the catering was an edible representation of downtown Madrid, included portions for people with gluten intolerance. We have to think in all of things because we want people can enjoy all our activities. Who is our target audience? We have two points of view. One is the professional point of view. We want to open doors to artists with disabilities so they can gain access to professional world. Our aim is to show that quality, that the work of people, of artists with disability is the same that artists without disability. So when these work are exhibited in galleries and museums without taking in consideration their disability, our goal will be fulfilled. And the second point of view is the general public. Uh, the biennial activities are open to all people. We will bring the world of artists with disabilities closer to the entire society. How do we do it? Accessibility is essential in our project. All spaces and contents, contents are accessible. Activity, activities and exhibition space uh, are accessible to people with disability. For example, the exhibition is accessible for blind and deaf, deaf people because you, we use audio guides for the blind and we say in Spanish, signo guías. I think we can Loose translated as sign guide. The contents of the exhibitions are in sign language and also with captions. Uh, also, writing information will be available in Braille, and exhibition rooms will be accessible for wheelchair users and people with their reduced mobility. The, pu the public will be able to touch some artworks. Our web is also accessible for the blind, and the catalog with the program is in an accessible, accessible PDF version in our website. The cinema series uh, and also theater will include movies with captions and also with audio de description for the blind. Workshops will take place in accessible spaces and sign language interpreters will be will be uh, available when they are required. 
And also it's very important that the professional with, who are working uh, with us know how to treat people with disabilities. I think training is very important in, on, in all the projects. And also visibility. In Spain, Fundación Once is very well known about disability, not in culture. So we need the support of uh, museums to do that kind of activity. Where, um, um, our com honor committee ha has, as a member, um, very important museums in Spain, contemporary art museums, for example, Museo Reina Sofía, Museo de Arte Contemporáneo de Barcelona, also the Thyssen, and many others. And also we, we have the support of the Spanish royal family. They have the presidents of the honor committee, and they grace us with their um, presence in the inaugurations. Uh, also, uh, the, these museums sometimes low, uh, lend us uh, some artworks. For example, in the last edition of the Biennial, we, we count with one Salvador Dalí picture. Um, if, if we speak about sponsorship and collaborations, uh, Fundación Once as a non-for-profit organization uh, obtains no profit with the activis activities we we carry out. So in order to organize projects like the Biennial, uh, it relies on donations and sponsorship, uh, sponsorships of uh, public and private entities. For example, Deutsche Bank, also Stavros Niarcos Foundation, was with us during the last two editions, uh, Madrid government and many others. Uh, the donations can be made in cash or in kind. An example of uh, in-kind donation is um, providing the spaces to do the exhibitions and the uh, in parallel activities because in Fundación Once we don't have uh, that kind of, of places. Um, and future. Oh. <laughs> Uh, the future is here. This year we will have the seventh edition and we will go a step further by showing the work of renowned artists that had disability. Uh, many people don't know that Matisse or uh, Toulouse-Lautrec or um, Goya had a disability and they were amazing. So we hope to have many of them in our exhibition and also more contemporary. For example, Nancy Spero, Chuck Close, among others. Our aim is to show that disability, instead of removing artistic abilities, it grants them. Our work will be finished when culture will, will be also accessible for all. You are all cordially invited to visit us the seventh edition of the Fundación Once Contemporary Art will be held from May to September at Centro Centro Cibeles, next to the City of Madrid headquarters. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Sonia, and of course, also all other our speakers. Uh, most of all, thank you so much for all the enthusiasm because it's really uh, the most uh, impressing uh, moment. Uh, I have also a lot of experience in this uh, uh, field. It's uh, very, very beautiful and touching to work uh, with people with uh, disabilities because uh, their echo is just pure and... and uh, and direct and in both ways, direct in critics and direct also when they are happy. And I think that's the best way for all of us uh, to continue uh, our programs, to develop our programs. Uh, and um, what uh, you said, Leila, uh, just very simple, to be creative, to have a will. That's it, that's just our message, I think, the best we can say. Uh, and um, yeah, now we have uh, about five, ten minutes for discussion, but before we start with the discussion, uh, I was asked to inform you that uh, the meeting point for the 
uh, award ceremony is downstairs at 5 p.m. next to the reception desk. Downstairs in the ground floor, please come to the reception desk in time. I was asked to tell you this, come downstairs at 5 p.m. in time because the group will together to the place where the award ceremony will then take place. So, and now it's up to you, just uh, our questions. Have you, no, you have no microphone. Yeah, uh, colleagues coming. Ah, well done, yeah, yeah. Wenn es ausgeht, wunderbar, danke. Hello. Yeah. I'm Vangel Trakalyano from Macedonia, and I would like to ask uh, in which uh, museums have, uh, have you worked in Macedonia, and one, what kind of uh, projects. I would also like to give one objection. Uh, according to the United, United Nations Organization, we're Macedonians, and our country is Macedonia, not uh, former U Yugoslavic Republic. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, it's Museum of Bitola from Bitola, and the last project they did it was with Museum from Knjaževac from Serbia, and they actually made this uh, physical uh, physical uh, 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 change in the building because it's a protected monument that building in Bitola, and they uh, put their cart lift and also made uh, workshops for uh, children with disabilities with local school and also with uh, Serbia, they made uh, their workshops. Uh, this is like a, what you said for, for Macedonia, I, I agree, but uh, in, uh, in application that was the name that was used, so it's not up to me, sorry. Please. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon, Daniele Marano from the Association for the Visually Impaired and Blind Ausia. A question for the lady, sorry, the name of the Salzburg Museum. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the only exhibition is uh, available with the easy to read. I wondered um, if uh, you have, uh, you said, uh, research and statistics, uh, how much people who are not, uh, let's say, the target group of this text actually read these easy to read texts in the same way as uh, a painting in alternative uh, format is uh, let's say touched by people who can see and experience uh, a broader experience in uh, enjoying arts i wonder if uh, this uh, let's say uh, easier way to convey information about arts arts is also uh, taken in account from people who are not primarily the target group of easy to read thank you um, it's a very interesting question. Um, we made an eye tracking studio, um, studio in the Salzburg Museum um, where we looked um, who reads the text. And we saw that many people who are not the, the first um, group who, for, for whom we made this text read this text. 46% read the text who have no disabilities. So this is a very high um, uh, percent. And many people take this text to get an um, overblick uh, over you um, for, the, for the exhibition. So I think it's a, um, a great um, thing for all people to have this text. If I want to get um, more information, I read the other text. Um, but first, I can de read the text in easy language. And so it is um, for all people. And many people read this. Um, at, the uh, at the beginning, many people in the museum um, had fear that people who read the text would think, oh, what's this museum? Are they to... Um, are they not able to write um, very intellectual texts or something like that? But the text in easy language um, have also the information, have also, they are also correct in historical or something else. But um, the, the fear was not um, 
uh, all people like the text. Some um, uh, very, very few people say um, about this text that um, that this is not good, and everyone would, will not read them, or they will get very bad in reading because of this text. But I don't think so. Peter. Uh, Linda Miesen from Tactile Studio. I have a question to Lara Schweller at MoMA. You mentioned that uh, you ask exhibition makers, ar exhibition architects, um, to come and uh, exchange um, before even creating a new exhibition. Mm -hmm. Are these people permanently working at the museum or are these uh, exhibition architects that come from other agencies uh, and then will be invited to MoMA beforehand? Uh, thank you for the question. We have brought in uh, accessibility experts from across different fields to come and advise and do trainings with our staff in-house. Um, but the exhibition designer that I had mentioned works at the museum, and the museum has a full staff of exhibition designers that uh, typically work on their own to create exhibitions. And that's why for us, um, yep. I work on accessibility across the museum, but my focus is really education. And that's where my expertise is, which means that it's not necessarily my role to speak the language of an exhibition designer and advise our team of very wonderful, very creative exhibition designers about how to create accessible exhibitions. So we look to consultants. Um, we look to people with disabilities. We work with um, different communities, cohorts uh, of people with disabilities to come in and advise us about how to create exhibitions, opportunities that will be enjoyable and engaging for them. But then it typically is our full-time MoMA staff that then design the exhibitions. I did just want to add on to the last answer, though. Um, for me, it's... Not surprising that the easy language was used by many people because what we find, whether it's creating exhibition text or designing universally for exhibitions, accommodations that we make for people with disabilities are used and enjoyed by everyone. And so I think when we, when we design in out-of-the-box ways, when we think about how to approach art um, through multiple modalities, what we're doing is we're engaging more of our audiences. Just as a, a quick example, when we have captions on our videos for people who are hard of hearing, that's also serving all of the international visitors who are coming to a museum where English is not their first language and they're listening to a video and also having the opportunity to read captions. And so we try to, to think holistically. And I just, I admired what you said and just wanted to also add that in support of um, designed for people with disabilities, that it really does serve everyone. No, then we have just uh, five minutes, it's okay for you, yeah, time to uh, present or to uh, have this marvelous summary of this session. Thank you so much, you do really a very, very good job. I, I'm meeting you very often in uh, conferences and it's really amazing what uh, she's doing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> the thing is, I, th I really believe that part of what I'm doing is adding to what you just said. Um, it's supposed to be for people with learning disabilities, but actually most of the people come to me and say, thank you once again because we heard so much and then there is a summary. And if I didn't grasp everything, please come to me, we can add it to the picture. Okay, so we heard of four really great examples where art is made uh, accessible for everybody. Uh, starting with the Museum of Modern Arts in the United States, where, I'll just switch sides, easier. Okay, um, where it is all about discovering, sharing, creating um, art so that part of our everyday life can be 
art. It's a place to meet, you said that this is part of your philosophy, and about 10,000 people with disabilities had the possibility to consume and to create and to be part of this art form. It is also about training staff on how to address people with disabilities, and you heard a lot of measures, but one of them was you created an accessibility task force that is actually trying to find ambassadors to help train trainers so that they can um, make sure that people with disabilities really get the full um, experience out of the visit. You also have a website and a lot of other things you do, but at the end you said um, a quote about a lady who said her daughter, was it, or niece? A niece, yeah. Uh, now found a spark and joy and now talks about herself as being an artist, just by being part of all this wonderful project. The second one is a collaboration uh, where, that brings together six European countries we, uh, within nine peers. It's a peer group, it's a learning peer group um, that fosters art to make sure that people are brought out of isolation. And how they do it is um, they collect accessibility knowledge together, the nine people, with two uh, consultants to make sure that museums know how to be accessible. Now, you face the big problem, like many museums, they're old buildings, so it's very difficult sometimes, but you bring other measures, like tactile possibilities, or an audio guide, um, or even a sign language um, support, yeah? Um, and 3D printing, I heard from some models, yeah? So a lot of things that you can do, even though you cannot rebuild the museum, so to make sure that um, accessibility actually happens as much as possible, because um, art is also a form of education for everyone, so people with disabilities should have the possibility to par take part in this. The Salzburg Museum, the key got a little too small, I think, the key ring here, <laughs> the key to the museum, the Salzburg Museum, is easy language. And that means that people with intellectual disabilities receive an extra form uh, of information in easy words, and you're supported by um, peers, by people with learning disabilities. Um, then Capito, you mentioned, I think, um, University Salzburg and other experts who came together and made sure that um, this is implemented correctly, and you have a lot of success stories. You got um, a, an award for being a pilot museum um, to bring culture to people with learning disabilities, and they say it's easy to understand, and you also wrote a handbook so that it can be used in other museums as well. So um, we heard from one um, young man who is now uh, very independently going through your museum and he doesn't need any more support. So that is one big point out of many from the Salzburg Museum. Um, Fundación Onze, did I say that correctly? Well, I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry, I have to move this back. I'm sorry for the camera. Um, uh, has been in place for 30 years, but in the year 2006 um, they began the Biennial Contemporary Art. And this is actually something where it gives accessibility to all kinds of people with disabilities um, and it should create awareness within the general public. So it's two things. It's making sure that people with disabilities can be part of the art, can become professional artists and I heard that many, many artists in history have, been, have, have had a disability and it never mattered, so why should it now? You will... You will have to come to the front to read this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Camera doesn't... Can I, can I help you with this? Here. Here. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, two important things, accessibility and awareness within the general public, and you're doing this by several workshops. Yeah? It goes along for four months, and um, several workshops take place that are all accessible, and the whole project is a non-for-profit. Non yeah? And it is supported by royalty, which we don't have, which is very nice, and a lot of sponsorship as well. So that's how you fund your project, but it, I think it's a long way to go still. And can we come and see you there? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's the summary. Thank you very much.
Well, thank you so much once more and uh, continue to enjoy the Zero Project Conference. <laughs>